everyday people. I'm with this guy over here named Blue. He's a, he's a special kind of guy. I've been seeing this guy on the train for like two years now. I've been out there for nine. <laughs> All right, so tell people your name and what you do. My name is Blue. Some people call me Brad. You can find me online under Brad Blue Bathgate. Brad Blue Bathgate. I'm a self-publishing author. I'm, you know, I write books and I come out and sell them. Every, I write them, edit them, and then come out and sell them. That's uh, basically it. I make a living off of them. For real? Yeah, I've been doing it for the last nine years. I make a living off of my imagination. So you've been writing for nine years? I've been writing for 12. I've been writing for 12. I've been making a living at my books for the last nine years. So that's about your books? Well, the books are very socially conscious poems with, with a, with a uh, dry wit, dry sense of humor to it. A lot of times, if you heard me for the first time, you would probably think I'm a comedian, but I'm not. I just like finding the humor in the ironic things of everyday life in the world. But, but in particular, New York City, because I think New York City is a funny place. It has a lot of contradictions about it. And um, that's what I basically find humorous about living in New York City. You know what? I heard that you was in the Daily News. Is that true? Yeah, I was in the Daily News. The Daily News back in about, about four or five years ago. The Daily News gave me a whole page. They gave me a whole page. I've been in the Daily News. I read it in the New York Times and the New York News Days. But the New York Daily News was the biggest article I had. That was the biggest one. Okay. So let me ask you a question. What motivates you to write? I just love to write. I like to give people something to think about, something a different. Um, I just like being creative. You know, like if I don't write, then, it's, then I feel frustrated. So to me, writing is a way of releasing my anger and uh, things that have pent up in me. A lot of times I used to think like, you know, a lot of times you doubt yourself, and then when you doubt yourself, I think the best way to the best way to to uh, clear all doubts about who you are is to put it on paper and just write it. That way you can read it over and over again. I agree. That's what I do, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want to sort some of your books? Oh, this is my first one. My first one was entitled "Corner Stores in the Middle of the Block." And how that came about? I used to work in a barber shop, and I was sitting across the street one day looking out the window and a friend of mine said I'm going to the corner store I'll be right back and I noticed the corner store wasn't on the corner it was in the middle of the block right so we still call it the corner store then my other book is entitled don't beat your children or they'll turn out like me it's not a book about how to raise your children but what the book does it encompasses my outlook on life and the, you know the things I've heard as growing up and uh, outside of the box thinking a lot of things I say go against modern opinion, so um, I think that's in general what, what offends people because people feel like, particularly in my culture, we feel like beating your children is a is way of getting your children to behave. A lot of times parents are just bad parents and bad children come from bad parents. Oh man, you heard about that lady that left her, uh, the lady left her baby on the, um, in the car seat on top of the car and drove off? Because she was half weed. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I think I heard of it. I always joke and say that you, you need a driver's license to drive a car. You should have a license to have a baby also. But don't don't quote me on that. <laughs> Alright, uh, you got three books, right? I got three. My other one is called Pretty Ugly. It's out of print right now. And I plan on reprinting it probably by the end of the month. Now, the reason I don't print that one is because it's a little more expensive. There's more pages. And uh, it doesn't move as fast as the knob as the poetry does. Okay. But eventually I'm going to bring it back out. Hopefully I have it back out. By How much are your books, by the way? My books I sell them for ten dollars. And if you're interested, I sell them for ten and ten. And if you're interested in getting a copy, hit me up on my Facebook page, Brad Blue Basket. Brad Blue Basket. All right. So, do you encounter writer's block, and what do you do? To there's overcome no, it. There's no such thing as writer's block. Explain that theory. There's no such thing as, people always say I have writer's block. There's no such thing as writer's block. Writer's block happens when you're trying to critique yourself and you're being too critical about who you are. You can write poems about having writer's block. So there's no such thing as having writer's block. Or if you're trying to write to to, 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 right. to cater right. to a certain crowd. Right, right. To cater to a certain crowd. The, the, the best thing I always heard, the, the, the greatest advice is to write your fears. Put your fears on paper. Yeah, I do that often. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. So, what motivates you to stay on your self-publishing grind? Uh, you know, just to get people out there, you know, um, just to let people know what I do. That's all.
That's my and to prove I have some I feel like I have something to prove. I'm egotistical like that. I can't lie. And uh that's why I do what I do. So you wanna be known. You wanna make you wanna you want the world to know your voice. That's right. Blue was here. That's or right. is here rather, that's is my here. That's so alright, check this out. What advice do you have for people getting into a sub publishing game? Love what you do and uh you know, love what you do and only care about the people who don't only care about the ones who like you. The ones who don't like you, fuck them. Like I always tell people who always want to try people always want to try to put their brain into my head so I can think like they do and they can't do that. So, you know, if they don't like you, forget them. I agree with that. How can people get in contact with you to get one of your books? I have seen you on the train. That's how we first met, actually. I don't know if you remember me. Uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm Brad Blue Bathgate, and you can reach me at 917 917-736-8047. 917-736-8047. All right, so is there anything you want to tell the viewers, everyday people, viewers here? Life is simple. Humans create the obstacles. All right, you heard it from Blue. All right, we out. That's right. Thank you very much. Really good stuff. Great poetry. Funny too. Thank funny, you, yeah. funny, funny, funny. Thank you very much. Thank no, I really do. I'm not blowing smoke. I really do like your stuff. I do. Good luck. It's edgy. And the, and the, and the self, doing it yourself, I think, is a great idea. In my opinion. It's so hard. The publishing world is so... And people write, like, people think like you write a book is just gonna fly for shut <laughs> You know, I tell people, I say, you know, a million people that have beautiful voices and they don't have record deals. So come on, man. You know, you know, people wait for television, radio, for dollars. Yeah. Well, that's the problem too, with publishing. Is it's the people that like are famous in something else that go, I know what I'll do. I'll write a book. And then, because they're popular, they can right. right. Then they get it right. Like these people, like the uh, housewives. Or Madonna's children's books. They're awful. In my opinion, they're awful. They're horrible. And they fly off the shelves. My girlfriend's a children's book writer, so, you know, I'm biased. Oh, but I think they're horrible. If you ever, you know, let's say you're in one of the two Barnes & Noble that still exists, pick one up. I mean, they're just terrible.